like to say good evening to, to everyone, to the saints, and to all those who are listening. I want to take you back to uh, the story of Joseph. We're starting in Genesis. We're in Genesis chapter 39, verse 20 through 21, uh, and verse 23, and we'll have some other scriptures that we're adding in. I want you to notice here that the Bible says, and this is the Living Translation, says, uh, he threw Joseph into a prison, and this was Potiphar when the king's prisoners uh, where the king's prisoners, prisoners were kept in chains. I want you to really pay attention to verse 21. Notice Joseph was thrown in prison, and he was thrown in a prison where the king's prisoners were, were in chain. But verse 21 says, but the Lord was with Joseph there too. So it lets us to know, it lets us know that it didn't matter where Joseph was, God was always with him. It says, the Lord was with Joseph and there, there too and was kind to him by granting him favor with the chief jailer. 23 says, the prison ward paid no attention to anything that was in Joseph's charge for the Lord was with him and made whatever he did to prosper. Okay? I want to bring out some important facts and points here says, but the Lord was with Joseph, okay? How do we know? And that's one thing we want to make sure that in this life, everything we do, we want to make sure that God is with us. And if you are born again, uh, trying to walk and live, trying to walk upright and live right, the Spirit of God is in you and he's with you and his favor is on you. The reason why we know that the Lord was with Joseph is because of the things that he that that took place. The first thing is evident that the Lord was with Joseph is that he granted him favor with the prison ward. And so it's not that Joseph knew a whole lot. It's not that he had all these special abilities is that he had the favor of God on his life. And that's what we have to, that's, that's the reason for living right. That's the reason for learning the word of God and knowing the word of God and studying the word of God and trying the word of God. Remember the Bible says faith without works is dead. So we want to walk in the word of God. Um, we walk by faith and not by sight. And so when we are practicing the things that be of God and God is well pleased with us, then his favor is applied to our life. And so whatever we do, wherever we go, we're going to win. We're going to uh, prosper. We're going to increase. So, he, so the first thing we want you to understand is that he granted Joseph favor with the prison ward. Favor here, and we're going to talk about favor again. Favor is, favor, finding favor means gaining approval. Okay? Gaining approval, finding favor means acceptance. I like this next one. Finding favor or having favor means special benefits or blessings. You know, we always say favor is not fair. You know, things just come and, 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 and overtake you. Uh, people just give you stuff. People just do good things for you. Uh, people just help you in the time of need. Seems like when there's nobody around, all of a sudden somebody shows up. And they, and they bless you. They give you what you need or help you to do some things or just take care of some things for you. And so we have to understand that favor is special benefits. It's not something that you earn. It's just, it just come in the time, a time of need. And so uh, favor means special benefits. It also means blessings. The favor that human beings receive from God depends on his good pleasures. See, God is God. He, 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 he does what he want to do when he wants to do it. Look, you, can't, you, can't, you can't hurt God as far as uh, uh, when he blesses you. He, he, in other words, he doesn't run out of blessings. Okay? He doesn't run out of blessings, and he's got blessings for everybody. He can bless me with 10,000 blessings, bless somebody else with 5,000, and somebody else with 20,000, and, and 1,000 more people <clears throat> with 3,000, 5, 10, 20,000 blessings and still not run out. Okay? And so we have to understand that God is the one who has all, uh, he has all the blessings, he has everything that we need, and he has plenty of it. So the favor that, that, that human beings receive from God depends on his good, his good pleasure and is often extended 
in response to, watch this, to prayer or righteous living. So as we pray to God, and when I talk about praying, I'm not talking about just begging him and asking him for stuff. But when you commune with God, you communicate with God every day of your life. When you are asking God and you're telling God and you're, you're seeking God to be obedient to him, to do his will, to be a blessing to others. As you're praying to God to receive instructions from him so that he can tell you what to do and you obey what he's telling you to do uh, uh, when it relates to others and when it relates to ourselves. A lot of times we do what God asks us to do uh, concerning somebody else. But when he asks us to change, when he asks us to go in another direction, when he asks us to do a certain thing that we might ne not necessarily like, okay, he wants us to, to submit to that. And when we, when, we, when we do what God, when we, when we respond to God, when we do what he asks us to do in prayer, and then righteous living, in other words, we try our best to live right, we're going to fall sometime. There's some time we're going to sin and not mean to. We're not practicing sin. But when we pray and when we live right, God has, for, for some reason, God extends he, distend, he, he uh, extends his pleasures to us. I like Psalms 84, verse 11, part B. Psalms 84, 11, B says, For the Lord God is a sun and shield. The Lord will give grace and glory. Okay? All right? The Lord God is a sun. He's a sun and a shield. He's life and he's protection. But look at what it says. Now, part B is what I really want here. The Bible says, No good thing... Tell yourself, no good thing. No good thing will he withhold. So that tells me that if the Bible says no, no good thing will he withhold, that means he's capable of, of withholding good things. So if you're not doing what you need to do, there are some good things that belong to you and that you could have that God can, can withhold from you. Okay, because you're not living right, because you don't pray to him, because you don't acknowledge him. You just kind of do what you want to do. But the Bible says here in Psalms 84, 11, B, he says, no good thing, all right, will he withhold from them that do what? Walk uprightly. Okay, when he says good thing, this is what he's talking about. No good benefits, no blessings. No positive aspect we will he withhold. So you have to understand. So, so this is the mindset you have to get. And, and, and you have to watch the enemy because the enemy will have you thinking that you're not worthy of anything. And you don't deserve anything. And what you got now is better than you've ever had. So you might as well be satisfied with that. And don't worry about moving forward. And you have to work for yourself. And you have to do for yourself. And think for yourself. And you got to get things for yourself. And it's all about what you do for yourself. Because ain't nobody else going to do anything for you. But I, I stopped by to tell you that when the favor of God is on your life, God has plenty of blessings and benefits, and he will touch anybody. He'll touch a stranger. He'll touch your enemy. He will speak and touch anybody to be a blessing to you. The Bible says no good thing will he withhold from them that do what? Walk upright. Just try to do right. Just plan on practicing what's good. Just plan on doing what God asks you to do. Plan on being a blessing to somebody else. Plan on keeping your body and, and your mind and discipline yourself to do the things that you need to do. Just plan on doing it. No good thing. Good thing here again means benefits. So everything that, 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 that's coming your way, sent by God from heaven, Guess what? You're going to receive it. You're going to get it. Why? Because God said so. And so, so you don't have to be in a hurry. <laughs> you don't have to be in a hurry. You don't have to be, you know, like, oh, I can't wait. I can't wait. You, man, just be cool. Just be cool. Just, just chill. You're going to get it. And, and, and a lot of times we, we, we kind of miss it because we want to hurry up and get it and we want to do what it takes to get it because we want it now. But God understands that if he give it to you now, you're going to allow the enemy to cheat you out of it and you're going to lose it later. I can't get no help. See, see, God has a process when he's going to bless you and benefit you. He, he, he takes his time and he does a thorough job of, of giving you what you need to have. But he, but he trains you in it 
and he, he causes you to be disciplined and he causes you to grow. And there are some things as he's working and developing you, he's causing some things to be worked in you and some things to be worked out of you. Because if he don't work this particular thing out of you, when he blesses you, you're going to get puffed up. When he blesses you, you're not going to have the discipline to hold on to it and keep it. When he blesses you, you're going to turn around and do other things. And now you don't have time. You've taken God's blessings. And with his blessing, you now don't have time to serve to God and praise to God and glorify to God that blessed you. And so he says, you like that. You don't know you like that. You don't know you think like that. You don't know you're going to act like that later, but I know you're going to act like that. So guess what? We're going to take our time and we're going to methodically walk through this thing. We're going to have a plan. We're going to work some stuff in and out of you. We're going to let you see that you're not ready in certain areas yet, but you are on your way and you kept and you have to keep speaking by faith that no good thing, everything that's good for me, everything that's good to me, Everything that's good coming to me, I'm going to receive and I'm going to have it. Okay? And, and just know that. Stand on that. And you have, to, you have to believe that way because there are some bad things that's going to come against you and there's some bad stuff that's going to happen in your life. And like Joseph, you're going to feel like it's going to look like that everything is over. You're going to be in a prison somewhere. Some, you're going to be in some form of prison. See, prison is not just a cell. It's just not being locked away. You can be in prison and walking around free every day. And what you have to understand that that just because you're in prison, just because you are lonely, just because your mind is tightening up on you and you feel like things are closing down and you're going to shut down and you're going to lose it, you have to tell yourself and understand that you have a Joseph's anointing and the anointing of God is on your life just like it was on Joseph's life. That's why this story is in the Bible to help us to relate that it doesn't matter where you end up or find yourself when the favor of God is on your life, you will succeed. You will go forth. You will continue to prosper. Let's see. Look, look let's, let's go on with this. It says, and so we understand that the first thing, well, we understand that the Lord was with Joseph. There, and the reason why, because he granted him favor with the prison ward. And we just talked about favor. And we talked about no good thing we will hold. Okay. The second thing is that we know the favor of God was on Joseph because whatever he did, it prospered. Whatever, whatever. And that's how you know God is still with you. That's how you know you hadn't lost anything. That's how you know that the power of God is still is real and is authentic. And it's not just a yesterday's word or yesterday's gospel, but it's real because of what he's doing right now. Whatever Joseph did prosper, whatever, whatever, whatever. What's the word whatever mean? What, what does whatever mean? Whatever means anything, anything you touch, anything you're connected to, whatever means everything, everything. I, it doesn't matter if you're doing it for the first time. It doesn't matter if you hadn't, you, you don't have all the, the ins and outs. You don't have all the, the resources. You don't have all the knowledge. That has nothing to do with anything. All you need to know is in your spirit, man, that whatever you do will prosper. So that means everything. That means anything. The Bible says no matter, it means no matter what he did. Whatever he did. And, and so whatever he did prosper, that means everything he touched, everything he touched, he accomplished something. Now here is where you have to really be particular and pay attention. Because we have a little, our mind is limited and our faith is limited. And some of the things that we think don't matter and are small and we can skip over and we don't have time to do what should be doing are the most important things that we should be doing. See, it's not, it's not the big things that, that, that causes you to be successful is the small things. It's the small things. It's, it's the small things. It's the things that most people don't pay attention to. It's the things that most people look over or run through or don't take time to do. It's the things, it's the things that, that, that's not important, doesn't get you recognition, you know, 
don't bring you among who's who and people ah, and praising you and, and you got all of these hits and uh, shout outs and what do they call it when you get a, when you get a lot of uh, what you dig on 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 the on on YouTube? Okay, likes. Oh, people people do crazy stuff. It just came to me. People do crazy stuff because they want what they do on 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 the internet on YouTube to go viral, and they figure if they go viral, then they somebody. Okay. I'm not going to tell you what I could say about that. But, but, but just because you go viral don't mean that you're successful and you're going to prosper. Sometimes you're letting everybody know what you don't know. That's as close as I can get to right there. I'm not going to go any further. And, and, and so we have to understand that whatever he did, it prospered. Anything, everything. All right? You have to tell yourself, and this is how I want you to think. You have to say to yourself, when, when you're in trouble and you find yourself in a prison situation, you find yourself in a bad situation, quote, unquote, it's bad for you. But it, all it's going to do is make God show out. God's going to show out. You just need to, you need to do like Daniel did in the, in the lion's den. You need to just go to sleep. You, you need to just don't worry. The same, he's been, Daniel was praying to God all of these years. All of these years, he praying and praying. Got in trouble for praying. All right. Do you, and so why all of a sudden he gets thrown in the lion's den and, and, and the thing that got him thrown in there won't work, no longer works for him now. He's in the lion's den and he needs prayer to come through for him. So now he thinks it's, it's not going to work. Of course it's going to work. It's, it's drill for real. It's, it's time for all of that praying that he's been, he's been doing. It's time for manifestation. And manifestation came forth. God sent angels down and shut the mouth of the lions. You don't have to worry about what's going on in your life. You don't have to worry about the lions and the tigers and the bears that's going on in your life. God will shut all of that down. He'll either make them your, he either make them your pillar or give them to you for a meal. And so maybe God is setting you up to use you. You don't know. Maybe your spiritual giftings are about to be on display to bring about a change in someone else's life. And so we have to understand that verse or chapter 40, and we're going to close this out. It says, Now sometime later the butler and the baker of the king of Egypt offended their lord, uh, Egypt's king, and Pharaoh was angry with his officers, the chief of the butlers and the chief of the baker. And we're just skipping through here. He put them in custody in the house of the captain of the guard in the prison where Joseph was confined. And the captain of the guard put them in Joseph's charge. Look at there. We're going to talk about this next week. And he served them. And one of them talked about he had a dream and the other one talked about he had a dream. And I need you to understand that here is a perfect setup for Joseph. He has the opportunity because you know what got him in trouble was him talking about his dream. Told his dream to his brothers. They got mad with him. Okay. He had a gifting of interpreting dreams now he has the opportunity to interpret dreams for the chief butler and the chief baker all right and so he didn't lose his giftings now he has an opportunity to let God use him in helping these men now he has a decision to make he can say oh I don't do that no more cause that's, that's the reason that got me in here in the first place I don't, I, don't, I, don't, I don't interpret dreams no more. Matter of fact, I don't hear nothing else about dreams. I don't hear nothing else about interpreting dreams because that's what got me in this mess in the first place. I am done with that. That's not what got that, that's That was not his attitude. His attitude was you have to ask God. All right, we'll get on this next week. He talked about, look, God knows, man. And God's going to let you know through me. And so remember this, that as you're looking around, talking about what's happening and what's going on and what you can do and what you can't do, how do you know God is not setting you up to use you? Because I've always experienced in my life that when trouble comes, all it does is propel me to go higher and do greater things. I hope this lesson has been a blessing to you. We'll see you next week talking about Joseph. God bless you.